This is another 6 player fixed card play friends game which is being played with us chatting on discord. The blue player is a novice, the pink player is an intermediate, the purple player is a master, and the green and yellow players are grand masters. And it looks like that the blue player has immediately went for Australia, he lost a relatively small amount when crushing the purple and pink players troops, but besides he still has to crush the 3 troops of mine, which with the blue player fortifying his troops to a blocked place, not going to move out as of now, I do not want that another player would instantly get a continent while I haven't even captured one myself. It's unknown which player the blue player would decide to target. But while I want help blue out, I won't deal any harm for him either, I will just leave my troops there for at least a turn, so the blue player wouldn't immediately capture a continent and that's it. And the only exception for not being an enemy for the blue player would have been if I had decided to go for Australia by myself. I've had been thinking for a while on what I want to do, and to try wiping out the blue player out from Australia was one of my considered choices, but after all with the purple player blocking my Asian troops by having these three troops in the territory of China, I decided that I will rather go for Europe. I mean I saw that the pink player added his troops there but seriously he is so much weak, so I don't think he should be a problem at all, so with me bringing a large stack of troops in Europe, hopefully he won't even consider going for it anymore. But oh boy, with the green player making the way for the pink player's African troops to get out from Africa, the pink player of course moved them there. So that was a very well played move by the green player. While it made him easier to capture Africa, at the same time he made sure that nobody gets Europe as long as Pink and I will be stubborn to keep our armies there, and with that there should be at least two players which are guaranteed to be weaker than the green player himself, so as long as the green player successfully captures and holds Africa, he has very high chances to get to the top 4 situation, so only one more player will be needed to get to the top final 3, and besides me and Pink being the players who could get very likely eliminated, another player could be very possibly be Yellow, if judging by our troops destination, as the blue player has Australia, the green player will get Africa, and the purple player will get South America, and before the yellow player captures North America, the continent players should get strong enough to prevent him from holding it as long as they want to. Anyway, the green player has been ignoring my alliance request which I sent him after moving into Europe. What I was hoping is what with the green player accepting my alliance request, and then with him capturing it, he would help me out to deal with the pink player so I would get Europe. But since the green player hasn't accepted my alliance request, I assume that I could be one of the players who he will be looking forward to eliminate. So because of that I decided to bring my biggest army into Africa, so he couldn't capture it, I mean it was the choice between staying in Europe or moving into Africa, but I mean Europe is a big continent, meaning that other players who already got small continents could decide to target the European player, while for Africa they would probably be fine with the African player. So in overall my goal was to prevent a third player from getting a continent, as those who get continents and successfully hold them, could very likely guarantee themselves being in a three player situation, as long as they mutually beneficially work together to get rid of the no continent players. Another decision I could have made is just to simply moving out to Asia, but I mean this game is being played with very decent players, so being without a continent while others would be having one, I would have been one of the weakest players who sooner or later would have been easily eliminated. But I mean if this game was played with low rank public random players, then of course the best decision would have probably been to move out to Asia and stay neutral, as in public lobbies if you prevent another player from capturing a continent, he could very likely blitz your army even if it ruins both of your chances to win. Anyway, it seems like the yellow player is a toast with not having a set at 3 cards. I'm pretty much sure that either the purple or blue player will take him out. Initially I thought that it will either be me or the pink player to get eliminated first, but with me, pink and green wandering in Europe and Africa, and with me preventing them from capturing those continents, it seems that the purples and blues attention went towards the yellow player. 
it's a very good thing that the blue player had sent me the alliance request which I am very gladly accepted, so not to be potentially targeted by him with him getting Australia, and then the purple player ignored my alliance request, but he doesn't target me either, so that's very promising as well. So of course I do not really trust the green and pink players yet. But I mean I wanted to try being friendly towards the green player and with moving out from Africa I sent him the thumbs up animation. And that worked out, he finally accepted my alliance request, which of course I do not know if I should trust obviously. Before the green player capturing Africa I sent him the attack request to attack purple, so he would wipe the purple player out from South America leaving his biggest army in the territory of Venezuela, while I would capture Africa leaving my army in the territory of North Africa which would be protecting him, and then with the pink player capturing Europe, we three might really ended up in a good position to guarantee being in top three, especially if the pink player then had protected the borders of Iceland and Ukraine, and if so, then I would have fortified my army to Middle East, and it might have potentially been a very strong triple alliance with non invadable borders. But I didn't tell that plan on the chat, so that's possible that the green player didn't really understand what I had mind, or maybe he just really liked being in the alliance with the purple player as what I saw is that the purple player wasn't really protecting the border against him. Also then with the green player capturing Africa I sent him the attack request to attack purple again with thumbs up and thumbs down to ask him, which he responded to thumbs down, and then the purple player added some more troops on his border anyway, so I wasn't going to take South America from him anymore anyway. As I was potentially thinking of doing vice versa variant as well, of me wiping out the purple player from South America and leaving my troops in Venezuela, while hoping that the green player would protect me from North Africa. Also if you're wondering why I moved out from Europe, is because the pink player asked me to. With turning the green player from an enemy to a friend, I wanted the same thing with the pink player as well. I mean I know that obviously I still shouldn't really trust them as after like few turns they could just decide to start targeting me. But if so, then in the next games we play, I will know that they don't appreciate it, so with a similar situation occurring again they wouldn't get rid of me from their continents so easily again. Also another thing was that the yellow player before me moving out from Europe invaded Australia, so if like the yellow and blue player were busy with each other, and then with the green and pink players not liking me, it would have been easier for the purple player to start targeting me over pink or green. So I just decided to be friends with them and just see how it turns out to be. Also the purple player asked me not to invade him into South America which I wasn't going to anymore anyway. And with the blue player adding his troops next to the army of the yellow player, I just continued waiting till Australia potentially could be wiped out for me. And as you can see it just happened. While I was potentially hoping to eventually get it, to be honest I didn't really expect for it happening so soon and easily. After dealing with the yellow player the blue player won't be really able to retaliate against me with me taking Australia from him. And then I assume soon enough he should get eliminated with us bringing to the 4 player situation. When going for Australia I specially captured the territories in this way, so I would be suitable of taking the blue player out. So just hopefully he gets weakened, as otherwise I might not go for him, as it could highly weaken me which I do not want. Also let's not forget that after the blue player's elimination, there will be one more player who will have to be eliminated so the game would advance to a 3 player situation. So far I'm not sure which unlucky player will it be, but hopefully it's not me. I see that the pink and green players have unguarded borders which could be easily invaded, so hopefully they don't suddenly fortify their armies in the way which would protect against me, as that would very likely indicate that they want to get rid of me next. The African and European players share a lot of borders with each other, so probably that wouldn't really make much sense for both of them to start fighting, so I think most likely they will stick being in a strong alliance. So I think it really depends on what the purple player does, of whether he will attack either pink or green. But I do not even have the alliance made with him, so I think I'll encourage green and pink to attack purple, hopefully the purple player doesn't finish capturing North America. 
Unfortunately for me he did, but with him not bringing his army to Kamchatka, I think I can still go with my plan of capturing Asia and leave my army on Kamchatka to block the purple player. The purple player after so much time accepted my alliance request but actually I do not really believe in him having good intentions towards me. And it's way too late anyway, as I already decided to go with my plan and told the pink and green players to attack him. I assumed that most likely I would have been the player who got targeted if I did nothing, and the purple player neither attacked pink or green by himself, nor sent me any attack requests to do so, so the alliance exception with him capturing North America looked very strange for sure. Of course I do not know what's in the purple player's mind but I do not trust him much. I think I didn't really have many options, I thought it was either me or him depending on what the pink and green players decide to attack to. And luckily, enough for me it seems both of the players decided to be in my side over the purples one. Also looking back to the game another thing which I could have potentially done instead of going for Asia, is invading and taking South America from purple going through green. But I was just really concentrated on taking Asia and didn't really think about anything else. But as you can see it worked out very well for sure. The green player fortified his biggest army next to purple, then the pink player crushed one of his North American armies, and now I've just manual rolled him a bit. So I think the purple player gets eliminated. And the reason why the pink and green players decided to team with me over purple is because they appreciated that I moved out my troops from their continents back then in the game. So poor, very poor player called purple. Fixed cards are a lot about diplomacy, and if other players gang up on you, then nothing much you could do. The game has to advance to a three player situation. The purple player told me to wipe out the green and pink players before him. But I didn't really know why he said that because I do not have as many troops as both of them combined. We three are basically more or less equally strong, just with me having 10 troops more than the second strongest player, which with my army being smaller, I couldn't take anyway. Though since the pink player is blocked what I could potentially do is to take the purple player out going through green South American army, and then see if I could afford taking the green player out for 4 cards. But yeah, I didn't really get an extremely good blitz roll crushing the green player's army, and then looking to the all troops in general, I predicted that if I take the green player out then I lose the game, even with the pink player's army being blocked. But honestly I'm not sure on that, what I think is after taking the green player out, I would have ended up having like 10 troops army, and then if lucky enough I would have gotten a 10 troops set, then invaded the pink player into Iceland and leaving these troops there and then fortifying the army which I would have had left from taking the green player out to North Africa. Assuming I would have successfully held both of the Americas with Australia and with the long having like 32 territories captured I would have received like 20 troops after the pink player's turn. So I'm not sure on that, but what do you guys think? Did I miss a potential opportunity to win or not? Anyway, when it comes to crushing the first green player's army in order to take the purple player out, why I really liked it, because it naturally made the game to advance, to waste some troops on someone quite naturally without making any of the players to be very mad. As if the green player hadn't blocked me keeping his troops in one big army, then I would have had to choose which player I want to manual roll. And that selected player would have been mad on me, but now while the green player still wasn't really happy that I crushed one of his armies, he still understood that I had the reason behind it, which was getting the purple player's cards. Also another thing I knew, that if it had kinda made both of us weak towards the pink player, then he would have been forced to team up with me on pink instead of weakening me also. So it really seemed to be a good decision to crush that first greens army no matter how it turns out to be. I've just sent a thumbs up for the green player because I'm planning to take both of the Americas while letting the green player take over Africa and Europe so we would trap the pink player in Australia. But wait. I think I have been too much focused on the chat on Discord because I only now realized that I have quite more troops than my opponents each. And with the pink player ending up blocking her army, I think it's absolutely winnable situation for me. And because of that I have to say a bye bye for you green.
And now I think I will try to use the four continents strategy on pink, though I'm not sure if I have enough troops, but for those who want to know the principle of that strategy is taking over both of the Americas, Africa and Europe while only having three borders to guard, which are Ukraine, Middle East, and either Alaska or Kamchatka. Unfortunately with the pink player having a set at four cards, every each of my continents will be invaded. But I think I should still be an advantage because of getting a good territorial troops bonus and having five cards, and that's not even counting the armies which I will still have left. And yeah I think I'm dominating. But yeah, I think to crush the green player South American army when taking the purple player out turned out to be extremely well. The pink player with me crushing Green's army got the initiative to attack him as well. The green player ended up being left alone, and with that I decided to try bringing him into my side again to see how it turns out being. So I invaded the pink player into Europe to encourage him to attack pink as well over me. It was no brainer for me to invade the pink player into Europe because with her still holding Australia, it was a bit too much, and with me saying her that I'm sorry that I need to attack her territory she sent me thumbs up, but probably for the green player looking that my intentions are very serious, he took that bite and captured a bunch of territories of the pink player instead of mine. Then unfortunately the pink player was still smart enough to invade me into both of the Americas, but she ended up blocking her army in Australia, which with me then realizing that it gives a good opportunity to take green out, I decided to go for it and win.